we shall rapidly revise few important points of quinolones. Quinolones are synthetic antimicrobials having a quinolone structure that are active primarily against gram negative bacteria. So, this is the quinolone structure. These are quinolones. So, nalidixic acid is a quinolone. And fluoroquinolones are fluorinated quinolones. So, you can uh, see here the fluorine is added to the quinolone ring. So, they have uh, many advantages over quinolones. They have high potency, bactericidal action, expanded spectrum, slow development of resistance, better tissue penetration, and good tolerability. Because of these advantages, fluoroquinolones are more commonly used than quinolones. And we have two generations of fluoroquinolones. The first generation includes norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, and pfloxacin. Second generation fluoroquinolones are levofloxacin, lomifloxacin, sparfloxacin, moxifloxacin, gemifloxacin, and prulifloxacin. Second generation fluoroquinolones basically have extended spectrum of action against more gram positive and anaerobes. Mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones are uh, basically inhibition of DNA gyrase enzyme. So DNA gyrase is a bacterial counterpart of topoisomerase 2 enzyme and also topoisomerase 4. So it inhibits both DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 4. DNA gyrase is responsible for relaxation of the positively supercoiled DNA during uh, a cell division. And topoisomerase 4 uh, is uh, responsible for separation of replicated chromosomal DNA into the daughter cells. So inhibition of these two enzymes affects the cell division in bacteria. Adverse effects of fluoroquinolones. So mostly fluoroquinolones uh, are not associated with diarrhea because it, uh, it doesn't affect gut anaerobes much. But it causes a rare side effect, tendinitis and tendon rupture. And uh, CNS side effects like dizziness, headache, restlessness, anxiety, insomnia, impairment of concentration, dexterity or seen. And photosensitivity is more common with lomifloxacin and pfloxacin. Prolongation of QTC interval is seen with levofloxacin, gemifloxacin and moxifloxacin and uh, fluoroquinolones are known to cause damage to the growing cotyledons. So commonly they are not uh, recommended for children under 18 years but you should always weigh the risk over the benefit. So suppose uh, if a child with cystic fibrosis with a respiratory infection uh, needs fluoroquinolones so it can be given uh, you know considering the benefit over the risk. And uh, they are prone to cause some drug interaction. Plasma concentration of theophylline, caffeine and warfarin is increased by ciprofloxacin due to uh, inhibition of metabolism. And similarly, the CNS toxicity of fluoroquinolones is increased when it is used along with theophylline and NSAIDs. And antacids, sucralfate and iron salts reduce the absorption of fluoroquinolones. So these are some important drug interactions. Uses of fluoroquinolones, they are uh, especially used in urinary tract infections, so except moxifloxacin and bacterial gastroenteritis and typhoid fever, bone, soft tissue, gynecological and wound infections and uh, some fluoroquinolones are used for respiratory infection, especially those fluoroquinolones which are active against gram-positive organisms like levofloxacin, gemifloxacin and moxifloxacin. So these are called as respiratory fluoroquinolones. And uh, uh, fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin, moxifloxacin, levo and ofloxacin, they are used as second line agents in tuberculosis. So they are used especially in the treatment of resistant tuberculosis. And they are used in gram negative septicemia, meningitis, especially pfloxacin which has good CSF penetration. And it is ciprofloxacin has been uh, approved for uh, prophylaxis and treatment of anthrax. And fluoroquinolones are used in the management of conjunctivitis. So norfloxacin does not achieve systemic therapeutic concentration and hence it is used, uh, hence it is not used for systemic infections but uh, it has a high concentration in the urine. So it achieves high concentration in, so in urine. So it is used in urinary tract infections. And most fluoroquinolones are eliminated by renal route. So should be very careful when uh, they are given uh, in patients whose renal function is compromised. And gatifloxacin uh, 
this fluoroquinolone was known to cause hyperglycemia in diabetic patients and hypoglycemia in patients receiving oral uh, hypoglycemic agents that is uh, it was uh, it was claimed to cause hyperglycemia as well as hypoglycemia in uh, diabetic patients and hence it was banned a short note on drugs used for typhoid fever so you all know typhoid is caused by salmonella typhi ceftriaxone is the first choice of drug ceftriaxone is given at a dose of 2 grams iv per day and alternative to ceftriaxone or cefepirozine and cefatoxin they can be given as alternatives and the second choice drug is ciprofloxacin at a dose of 750 mg bd and alternatives to ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin and levofloxacin and third choice drug is azithromycin 500 mg od so all these drugs are given for a duration of 7 to 10 days chloramphenicol and cotrimoxazole were previously used for typhoid but nowadays they are not reliable because of development of resistance thank you